In this short video, we will first review how sections of Telepay's Studio logic are typically reused, and then we'll explore how this can be done in Remote Connect for the Skaterpack X70 type smart RTUs through the use of derived function blocks. Here we can see a sample Telepay Studio application, which includes several networks of logic. In each section, after various calculations have been performed, the application needs to use the same multiple rungs of logic. Instead of repeating this logic multiple times, using more memory and possibly increasing scan time, it can be placed into a subroutine and then just called as needed. It can then be reused as many times as required throughout the applications and only included in the scan cycle when needed. When using Remote Connect with an X70 type skater pack, the logic editor provides the ability to create derived or custom function blocks, also known as DFBs. These can be repeatedly used wherever desired in an application. Each usage is called an instance. They may be placed into a library for use on other projects, and they can be shared with others as well. DFBs may include as many as 32 inputs and 32 outputs allowing greater processing capability. And for flexibility, they may be written using any of structured text, function block diagram, ladder diagram, or instruction list. As a derived function block is developed, it will most likely include private variables. These are commonly known as local variables, meaning that they're hidden from the logic outside the function block itself. In this way, a private variable in one instance of a DFB won't interact with the same variable in another instance. A DFB may also include public variables. These will be available globally anywhere within the entire application. A common use for a public variable is to share diagnostic or status information with the rest of the application. For example, a motor starts counter. A third type of DFB variable that can be configured is the input-output variable. This type may be used like a pointer in a C application. It allows passing a variable or a structure such as an array into the DFB to be read and then allows updating the variable's value for use elsewhere in the application. A derived function block may be built with one or more logic sections allowing functionally different logic to be kept separate. Each section may be developed with any of structured text, function block, ladder diagram, or instruction list, whichever is most suitable. These sections may be enabled or disabled with a control object, just as main program or masked logic sections can be. And as a very helpful diagnostic tool, it's possible to debug any DFB instance while connected to the RTU. Just right click on the DFB instance and select the Refine option. This can be very helpful as the operation of any DFB may vary from others of the same type depending on the values fed into it. Now let's have a look at the process of creating and using a derived function block in the Remote Connect Logic Editor. I'll create a DFB that'll help control and monitor multiple motors. In the Digital area of the Objects tab, I've already renamed several digital inputs. We can see digital input 5 is M1 start, 6 is M1 stop, 7 is M1 status. These are wired to a physical input simulator board. And then for a second motor, we've got M2 start, stop, and status. Then for outputs, if we scroll down to digital outputs, I've renamed digital output 1 to be M1 running, and digital out 2 is M1 aborted. Then DO3 is M2 running, and DO4 is M2 aborted. So you can see we've got variables or objects ready to go for two motors. So now that I've got the Remote Connect application ready to go, I've opened Skaterpack Logic Editor. And to start creating a derived function block, I'm going to double click on the derived FB types folder. We make sure that DFB types is selected here. 
Now I'll click on the first available line and give this derived function block a name. I'll call it motor control, simply enough. We then expand the DFB and we can see categories here, subfolders called inputs, outputs, input, output, public and private variables, and then sections where logic is actually created. I'll expand the inputs folder and then add a few inputs. I'll add start, stop, and status. You can see that each of these is by default created as a Boolean type, but we can change those as required. Now I'll expand the outputs category and we'll add two outputs, one called running and one called aborted. Each of these inputs and outputs will create a pin on the derived function block, either input pins or output pins. The names used are generic, so this DFB can be used in multiple ways. Next, I'll expand the Sections folder, and we'll create a logic section. We'll double-click on the first free line and call this logic section Control, and then when I hit the Enter key, up pops a dialog, and it asks what logic language I would like to use. I'm going to pick Ladder Diagram, because that's somewhat similar to the way Telepace is programmed, and then click OK. Now I'll double click on the Control Logic section to open it. Here's the logic that I've created for this derived function block, a simple motor control circuit in this case, and a timer to monitor the status input. Now we could build this logic and save it in preparation for use. If desired, you can put this DFB into the Logic Editor library so it can be used later on other projects. It can even be shared with other programmers. First, I'll open the Tools menu and then go to Types Library Manager. If it hasn't been expanded already, we would expand the Libset folder and then the Custom Lib subfolder. Here we can see a custom family subfolder under custom lib, and that's where we'll put this. If you didn't have this, you could right click on custom lib and create a new family to place it in. Okay, so we will place our new function, uh, drive function block into custom family. Here's how we do that we right click on motor control, this new drive function block we've created, and we'll click put in library. And we'll expand and select Custom Family and click OK. And then we'll click OK again, and it is ready for use in other projects. Now we want to actually use this new derived function block. To create a new main program logic section, I'll expand the MAST or Master Logic folder. I'll select the Logic folder where Logic sections are actually created, right-click on it and say New Section. Yes. Now I'll name this Station. And I'll use a language of Function Block Diagram in this case. Click OK. Now we could use the Input Assistant button again, or we could just press Control-I. And now I can use the ellipsis button to find the custom function block I created, the derived function block, or I could just type motor control, and it should automatically populate. There it is. So I'll click OK. And then I just click where I want to drop this function block. There it is. I can press the control key and use my mouse's scroll wheel to zoom in if desired. OK. So now I'm going to simply double click on the start input pin, use the ellipsis button, and I want to pick M1 start, but not just M1 start itself, that is the overall object, but we'll click the plus to expand 
the object, and you can see various parameters. Um, we want the dot value subparameter of this object. Then we'll do the same with stop. And it's going to be m1 stop dot value. And we'll do the same with status. The dot value parameter. And we just keep going for the running output that would control the motor. We'll select m1 running dot value. And for the aborted output, this is if the timer reaches its full value of five seconds, we'll pick m1 aborted dot value. So there we have this function block fully populated. I can click on it, move it around a little if I like. But to show you the full value of creating a derived function block, we can simply copy this function block. I can right click and select copy or use control C. And then I can right click again and paste and drop a copy in. There it is. Notice the instance number here is zero. The instance number here is one. Now we need to simply change the object names from M1 to M2. It's as simple as that because we've already created these objects. I'm just double clicking on the object parameter here and that opens it so that we can edit. I could have hit the little check mark, but if you just hit enter, it does the same thing. So when I'm done, I would build all of this logic. I could certainly go ahead and add other logic or I could add other instances of this DFB. I would save it here. We can go back to Remote Connect and save it here as well, of course. And now we could download it to the RTU and run this. To learn more about the Skater Pack, access the user documentation on the Schneider Electric Exchange shop and the Schneider Electric website. Also, See our videos on YouTube.